welcome to Excel Maven Expert Series. This is session number three, uh, where we're going to learn how to build dynamic scrolling charts. Um, this is a tricky one, but honestly, it is my favorite session hands down because it's a way to use Excel uh, functions and formulas and charting and graphing tools in a really clever, interesting way to do something that people, most people don't think uh, Excel is capable of. So let's take a look at the, the finished product. Basically, we have a chart here um, that's feeding from 12 months worth of data with impression and click metrics. Now the catch is that using these two scroll bars, I can either scroll through my data so that the window of data that I'm looking at scrolls left to right, and I can also change the size of the window that I'm looking at using this zoom function. So if I only want to look at three months at a time, I can do that or I can extend it out. And now the key is that most charts you'll ever see in Excel are based on a fixed array or range of data. In this case, if you select our chart and you watch the uh, data reference here on the left, as I change my scroll bars, you can see that the array itself is actually shifting. So using the scroll function, I see that the entire window is moving and by changing the zoom, you can see that the window of my array is shifting. So this chart is built on a dynamic array um, and that's what gives it these kind of custom visualizations as you change these scrolling bars. So really cool feature, it allows you to do some, some very cool visualization work. And to do this, we're going to need to use a few different functions in Excel. Um, we're obviously going to use charting and graphing tools uh, in particular using combo charts. We're going to use the name manager where you can define and name specific arrays of data or cell references. And last but not least, we're going to use the offset function, uh, which is kind of the driver behind all of this. So here's what the offset function looks like. And this is the syntax. Make sure to make a mental note of this because we're going to need to write some offset formulas from scratch and we'll need to remember uh, exactly how this formula is built. So basically what you say is, okay, offset and your reference is what's your starting point. So if you want to start at A1, that would be a reference there. Uh, next you say, okay, from my starting point, how many rows down do I want to move? Next piece, how many columns over do I want to move? And then last but not least, if you'd like to return an array or a reference of cells as opposed to the value from a particular cell, then you would insert uh, height and width uh, functions here. So the height would be in terms of the number of rows of the array that you want, and the width would be the number of columns. So it's a little bit tricky to wrap your head around, but it should become more clear as we uh, get hands on. So what do you say we do this thing? Um, got here basically the same data set just without any of the features built out yet. So first thing we want to do is in basically drop in our scroll bars. So we're going to go to the developer tab. If you don't have the developer tab, you can go to file, options, customize ribbon, and then take a look here at main tabs. And you may not have a check mark uh, next to developer. If you don't, go ahead and give that a check. Hit OK. And then you should see that pop up. So in the developer tab, I'm going to insert uh, this right here, which is the scroll bar. It's type of form control. And then you just basically can just drag the shape however you want it. And then I'm going to immediately control copy, control paste a second version. And now I have my scroll and zoom bars ready to roll. The next thing I want to do is uh, assign these controls or format these controls. So start with the scroll bar. I'm going to right click, go to format control. I want to set my minimum value to zero. I want to set my maximum value to 12 and then incremental change one. That's fine. Don't need to change the page change. And then my cell link is going to be this scroll index cell, which in this case is C17. Okay, that's great. And now I'm going to do the same format control for the zoom bar. This one I want my minimum value to be 1 because I always want to zoom it to at least one data point. 
the maximum value to be 12. Again, I can keep these the same. And my cell link is going to be C18 here. Great. So now, as you play with these uh, scroll bars, you can see how uh, the cell that they're tied to changes accordingly. Great. Um, the next thing we need to do is go into our name manager, which is in the formulas tab, name manager. Um, oops, these are already in there. I'm going to delete these. Start from scratch. Now, what we need to do is create five different named arrays here. The first two are pretty straightforward. We call it scroll index, and all that's going to be is that cell C17, which is tied to my scroll bar. Second one I'm going to create, just a new name. We'll call this one zoom index, and that's going to be the cell linked to my zoom bar, which is C18. Okay, now I need to do three more which will basically define the data references that will feed into my chart. So I need basically an array for my x data, my x axis, and for both y values, which is impressions and clicks. So I'm going to start with my x, call it x values. And now in most cases, for most charts, it would just be a fixed array, kind of like that. In this case, this needs to be dynamic, so we're going to actually input an offset function here. So we're going to do offset from the first month, B3, and then you remember the offset function where it said, next step, how many rows down do I want to go? Well, that's a function of what our scroll index is telling us. So roll, scroll index will be the amount of rows we want to move. Uh, we don't want to move any columns over, so I'm going to put a zero. And then the last piece is the height and width of the array that I want to return. So the height of my array is a function of the zoom index, right? Because if the zoom index is one, then I'm zoomed in on just one particular month. If it's six, then that means I want six months included in my array. So that defines the height of the array feeding into my chart. And last but not least, the width of my array it's always just going to be one column over. So that should do it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this out. OK. So that's my x values. Now I'm going to create two more y values. One, these will look very similar. So right where it says refers to, that's where I'm going to put my offset function. So equals offset. And if my first y value is impressions, I'm going to choose the first impressions field here. Rows is going to be scroll index. Don't want to move any columns over. Height is zoom index. Width is 1. Okay, that's y values 1. Last but not least, we should do y values 2. And same case here, offset. This time it's going to be first clicks field, scroll index, zero columns over, zoom index, one width. Okay. All right. So now I should have all my definitions and named arrays set so that I can close this name manager and I can insert my chart. So I'm going to start with a column chart. We're going to adjust this in a minute. But if I right click, go to select data, this is where I can add my fields. So the first series name, let's do uh, impressions here. And the series values, it's, it's not going to be any particular value. It's going to be the named field that we created. So it's important to keep the name of your tab here, and it ends with an exclamation point. And then after that point, you write y values 1, because impressions was my first y value. Okay, and then my horizontal axis labels, that field, rather than being you know, a particular month, it's going to be x values. Great, and then I'm going to add 
my clicks. So I'll call the series name clicks, series value. I'm just going to click on D3 just to give me that scroll chart exclamation point header. And then here's where I would type Y values to. Great. Last but not least, I need the horizontal axis labels um, for clicks as well. So it's going to be scroll chart X values. That should just about do it. So now everything's in here. The last thing I want to do is uh, select my clicks here, right click, format data series. I want to put this on the secondary axis here. Um, you know, the other thing you can do, which is actually a bit easier, is change chart type, go into combo chart, and then here I see my two fields. So I can change um, clicks to a line of the checkbox so it's on the secondary axis. Okay, that looks a little bit nicer, easy to read. Now let's see if that works. So using our scroll bar, nice, it's scrolling through the months. I can zoom in, I can zoom out. Awesome, that sounds good. If you want to clean it up a bit, one thing I like to do is just uh, change some of the format uh, for the data series. I'm going to do a solid dark line here, make it a little bit thinner. I like doing the smooth line. I'll add a little shadow here. And then for my uh, column chart, let's just do a solid fill. That looks nice. No border. And uh, why don't we just change the gap width a little bit so that they're uh, a bit closer together. There we go. So now we have a pretty nice looking chart. Um, dynamic. Uh, can be scrolled, can be zoomed, um, and obviously like we showed you before, the actual array of data uh, changes as you adjust the settings of your bars. So um, hopefully you're able to follow along. Um, definitely takes some practice to get this down, but once you do, um, it's a really cool tool to have in your arsenal. So thank you guys for tuning in. Head to excelmaven.com to learn about uh, hands-on personalized training courses, and then stay tuned for uh, session four, which is all about index and match functions in Excel. Thanks. Talk to you guys soon.